few months ago on this program. That pie is unbelievable. Um, I told you that Cass Sunstein was the most dangerous man in America. He's our regulatory czar. He's the guy who the behavioral economist, he's the guy um, that says uh, he can get people to uh, act in economically irrational ways by nudging them. Well, let me show you a headline today from the Wall Street Journal. Economic policy, nudge, gives way to shove. The article is about how the sneaky incentives like cash for clunkers, they're not cutting it anymore. People aren't buying into it. So we need to do something else. Can't nudge them anymore. They've now decided to shove. Evidence, Obama is shoving the insurance companies. He wants to regulate insurance rates. He wants to prohibit commercial banks from owning or investing in private equity firms or hedge funds. He can't nudge them there, so he has to push, penalize, take away, shove, threaten. That's why the, the good chairman Mao, who ironically, so many, in the people, uh, so many of the people in the White House seem to love so much, says power comes from the barrel of a gun. We've seen it in history over and over again. Nudging doesn't work. So when that doesn't work, but you have to do the right thing for the people, what do you do? Well, shove. But sometimes shoving doesn't work. Sometimes there are people that just aren't intimidated. Well, that's where this guy's handy gun comes into play. It's great. You know, Woody Guthrie, oh, he loved communism. This land is made for you and me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me show you the uh, Constitution from uh, Communist Russia. How they changed from a nudge to a shove. In 1936, the Soviet Constitution, nudge. 1977, the Soviet Constitution, shove. In 1936, they promised certain ownership rights and the great things citizens could have. But in 1977, the language had morphed into, you may have these rights, but you couldn't have too much. In the 1930s, citizens in the Soviet Union were promised a system of equality, fairness, justice. By 1977, that had turned into the Constitution, just a couple of tweaks here, well, you're going to have that justice depending on your work and the results of that work. Gee. I thought we were all alike. I thought we all deserved equal. That would determine your status in society. That's quoting the Constitution over there. And those who don't work, don't eat. Well, what happened to equality? Nudge, shove. In 1936, the Constitution provided for the existence of a small private economy. 1977, private economy, what the heck is that? What are you? If that's what you were hoping for, you're out. You see, progressives believe that man can be perfected. But the founders knew that's not true. It never has been. I mean, I hate to go all Bible on you, but only Jesus can save a man and perfect him. That's it. Here on earth, none of us are going to be perfect. Of course, not all of us have tickle fights. A man will always have flaws. Doctors, teachers, nurses, priests, churchgoers, some are good, some stink on ice. But that's why we base our system on the individual. Okay? You can't have flawed people in control. The founders knew this. You can't have flawed people controlling all the land, all of the food, all of the income. It never ends well. Here's why you need to be afraid of big government. Down at the bottom, where there's no government at all, anarchy. Here's the big government, and actually it's, I should have made this more like this. The higher you go up, the more government you have, the more systems you have, the more control of people you have. You got it? Now, in every society, there's going to be a religious zealot. Just so I can scare Rosie O'Donnell, because she may be watching and she'll go, Oh, well, that's Ahmadinejad. He's totally fine. He only kills gays in his country because Allah tells him to. Okay, let's pretend he converted to a Christian. Now Rosie's like, oh, a Christian, a monster. Ah! Okay, let's just say for the left, he's a Christian for our purposes. If he's down here, and he exists in, in all countries, in all societies, this guy exists. 
If he's down here and Chairman Mao, who says, hey, let's give everybody, instead of a name, a number, and if they don't like it, we'll shoot them. If he's down here where our founders had us, there's no real structure for them to be able to do that. Oh, sure, they're going to exist, but they don't have any power. Limited government. You keep power small. Because as the government goes bigger and bigger and bigger and has more structure and more strength, these nut jobs, assuming he's a Christian, because he's totally peaceful as somebody who listens to Allah, but let's just say he's listening to Jesus. <sighs> he will kill you if he disagrees with you. This nut job will kill you if he disagrees with you. Got it? It's great, you know, if your guy is up here and you're like, yeah, I hate all those non-Christian, all-a-loving people. Or, yeah, I think everybody should have a number. But if you're for this guy and this guy gets in, you're screwed, Jack. Democrats, you're, I mean, you weren't for a bigger government under George W. Bush. But now, suddenly, oh, it's okay, I guess. While Obama is in office right now, hey, brother, I guess it's going to be good. Sure. Increase the government control now. And while Obama, Reed, Pelosi, all sweet little angels, what happens with this much power? And they're up here. What happens when they lose their power? Because eventually they will. And they'll, they'll, all, they'll all step aside and say, what happens whoever gets in next and has this much power? Are you willing to leave so much power up for grabs? Do you really believe that there are no nut jobs down the road? Power swings from here and back. This is not the American way to have this much power because these guys are dangerous up here. You slide the power back to a minimal sized government because these guys exist. When they're as close to the bottom as you can get, sure, our house will continue to burn down. But the more government you have, these guys will pop up and they will assign blame and they will give solutions that will be crazy and people will listen to them. They must not have the apparatus without the serious balances and checks of the American people. And we are losing them every single day. Back in a minute. The president wanted to move the census so the White House could oversee it rather than the Commerce Department. And that was for power and control and money. And people said, oh, gee, what could he possibly do with the census, really? Here's what he could do with it. In fact, here's what he is doing with it now. He'll use the full power of the census to continue these big, bloated government programs, not continue them, but expand them in perpetuity with one tweak of the system. You move it from the Commerce Department to the White House. Here is the latest from President Barack Obama. He is now proposing a new experimental scale to determine America's poverty level. Wow, I'm glad, he must, he must never sleep thinking of these things. Right now, we base the poverty level on purchasing power. In other words, you're poor. How many potatoes can you buy? How much money do you need for a house and potatoes for your family? It's based on what you make and what you can buy. Obama's new scale would base poverty on what you can buy relative to what other people can buy. Excuse me? This is another way to redistribute the wealth. Your income can go from the current poverty level of 22,000, depending on family size, to 70 or 80,000 or more. And you'd still be considered poor. Because what do your neighbors have? Excuse me? Again? Excuse me? This new system will artificially increase the number of Americans considered poor. They need our help. They're poor. For instance, the number of Americans 65 and older considered poor will double. 9.7 now to 18.7 under the new measurement. Wow. How will that change the debate about Medicare, Medicaid, and health care? It will also likely send the number of people considered poor in the U.S. beyond the numbers of poor in impoverished nations like Bangladesh and Albania. Does anybody really believe that the United States has more 
poor people who are worse off than the people in Bangladesh? I don't think so.